So today we're looking at Patrick Jones the second, 4-3 defensive end out of pit, 6'4 and a half, 264 with only 32 inch arms. 17 and a half sacks over the past two seasons, playing almost exclusively from a wide nine alignment. He's definitely a 4-3 end instead of a 3-4 end, so those teams will probably grade him higher. Jones has like three moves that he uses a lot and some good physical traits. He has some good twitch to his game. He's a pretty good run defender, so his floor might be relatively high. He's got twitch, but not a lot of power, or if he has it, he doesn't convert it right. He's also not really a reactionary hand fighter, and we'll talk about why I think you can tell that in a player like Jones. He's got some potential, but I don't know if it's as high as some people think who are just watching the highlights of his counter club swim combo move, which looks sweet. If you're just casually looking at it, and it's a good move, so we'll talk a lot about that and look at his game from more of a top-down perspective, how the details in this game fit together, and where you might want to take him. Just look at the movement skills. He reminds me of a little, like, of a gazelle in how he moves. Like, he bounds. It's not, like, completely efficient movement. Like, he gets lateral very well. And so the further you can widen some of these sets, he wants to continue to widen you, continue to widen you, and then hit you with his counter punches, which are really more movement based. And they're directed as inside moves. And you'll see more of this on his tape. This is really his fastball, but it's a counter move. So like when he can go to this, he's really good. He's fluid. Once everything's kind of aligned, once he is like in a good coordinated position, He's able to maintain his acceleration like out of his stance, hit that sharp angle, and then get inside the quarterback. He does this a lot. He's just watching this move in real time. If the double doesn't come quickly enough, he can squeeze through some of these lanes. Like This is a good move. The only problem with this move from certain alignments is that your pad level can rise a little bit with the swim. And so I think because he's not a super powerful athlete, it can stall the first part of his rush if it doesn't like hit the way that he wants to. Because it's different if he's going to pull this move off into the B gap. And obviously tight end chip. This isn't a true rush rep that we are going to analyze. But I think once you get hands on him, it can stall him a little bit. I don't think he plays you well down your center. And again, you're not going to be able to do it on this specific play. But he wants to be able to get you going upfield, get you meeting it at a certain set point, and then bang it back inside with his counter move. With this move, you can see how like it's partially fluid. But if you watch his feet and the rest of his body, feet getting pointed outwards, he's able to keep working, but he's going to get pushed past the pocket. And so... I think there is like a little bit of rawness to his overall like coordination. And you'll see this on plays where he's cornering the edge. And I think that his movement isn't always as efficient. And there's other things there too. But I think this is also a sign of a player who might want to play at one speed. I don't know if his body is fully letting him make the most of his get off. Because he's got good twitch. He's got good get off out of the, out of the gates. But I don't think his coordination fully matches up with that. Can you develop it? It's an interesting question. Another thing I noticed, on certain outside rush paths, he has a tendency to lose his footing in certain situations. So it's going back to that club. But if we look at why, why does he lose his footing? I think it goes back to the coordination part. He's not the most coordinated athlete. And so the tackle's punch didn't really hit here. But he's not really able to cut that closer because this is all about counteracting forces. And so with the club, he's getting himself too much outside. When he's too outside, he's going to have to cut that angle sharper than he needs to. I don't think he gets all his cleats in the ground. I think this is more of a coordination thing. Because with a player like Curtis Weaver, he was a player where if you actually looked at his like ankle flexion, I didn't think he could physically corner very well, just based on his body dimensions. This is more self-imposed. The left tackle did not do anything here to get Jones in this situation. This is Jones playing a little too fast for his own good and kind of setting himself up in this situation. So do I think he has the physical ability to corner? Yes. Is he coordinated enough to constantly do it? I don't know. All right, so here's a move that I think has some promise. He's got to change a few things about how he executes this move. 
So the outside club rip. I think he can corner better from these positions. The only problem with it is that with the club, he doesn't use the club in a way that like generates a ton of force. And as you can tell, tackle's not going to get any interior blowback. He's not going to move. Like You want to move him a little bit to the inside. Because the more that you can flip his hips, the better you're going to be able to corner, the better you're going to be able to work outside. This has to come from your lower body. You can't just throw a club in between strides. You have to time it up. Because it's got to come from the bottom up. If you just try it with your upper body, it's not going to work. So I think if he can learn to generate the force, to use it, to time it upright, to generate the force fully from the ground, and have that club as the extension of all of his other power, if he can get some displacement on the club, I think he corners better from these situations than some of the other outside rush situations. So if he's going to win as an outside rusher, I think this is actually the move that you want to focus on. Because he's got the get off to execute this. I'm just questioning, does he have the power? Does he have it and he can't use it? Or does he just have enough of it? Those are the questions you want to you wanna explore. So again, going back to the club, he's going to use this shooting the B gap up against the guard. He tries the club swim, arm over, gets himself turned around. But again, this might be self-imposed because he's a little too ahead of himself. Like he's trying the club earlier. Like the force is not like generating bottom up. He's kind of just doing moves to do them. And so when he uses the club, the club's not violent. It's not going to do anything to guard. It actually just turns him around. The guard's able to handle. And yes, the dynamics change when you consider alignment, where he's rushing from. But this club's going to have to get more violent if he's going to open up those inside lanes. And if he can open up those inside lanes, he can be really good on B-gap stuff. But I don't think he has the power to just deal with it otherwise. And so he's either got to perfect this hand combo, get stronger, or I think he's just going to win in like situate like when he's going to win in these situations is going to be situational. Like no pun intended. So last video, we talked about quickness being an option for splitting double teams. Alignment factors into this because it can enhance your options when you decide to crash the B-gap or if in the pass game, if you're, if you're going to hit the B-gap, hit the inside with the counter. Pitt almost always goes into a four-man alignment with their edge rushers in wide alignments, which is favorable for Jones. So pass and run game, the dynamics, they're all going to change whether you're in a nine, whether you're in a seven, whether you're five, four, four I. But in a wide nine, crashing the B-gap hits at a sharper angle. And so it kind of changes the, the blocking angles, and you can build up more acceleration. But good players still make plays. And so Jones, double's not going to be there right away. Shows his good initial quickness, locating the football, locating the ball carrier, making the tackle near the line of scrimmage. As a backside player, as a, as a backside defensive end in certain plays, if you don't block him, he does a good job. At the angles he takes, locating the ball carriers, does a good job. Um, you want to account for him. And obviously, not every single blocking scheme or every play is going to do that. But he does a good job in these types of situations as well. High floor player. Handles tight ends well at the point of attack. Locates the ball. Finds it. Does this a lot. I could go over, I don't know, 50 plays of him doing this type of stuff. But yeah, you like... Whenever he's got a smaller guy on him, he always reworks his hands. You can see a little bit more of the power of the displacing ability there. So in run defense, a lot of the ways that he deals with blockers is actually like using the wrist as an aiming point. That's where he's looking to disengage a lot of the time. Backside of the run play. But I think he does a good job like using these as levers in these situations. And you see this a lot where he's looking to disengage the inside wrist either to control block. Sometimes he does it in pass reps, but he does it more in the run game. Um, I think he's going to handle tight ends well on like outside zone stuff. So when you talk about smart active run defense, I think Jones definitely shows that. And I think that's why he has a little bit higher floor, even though he might not have star star traits. So I think he's going to be able to play in the league. And so you're going to have more containment responsibilities. He's going to have to play these more outside in. But he does a good job working back to the quarterback. If you watch a lot of these situations, 
um, RPOs, option plays, keeping contained to his side, making plays also within the integrity of the defense. I think he does a good job, gets in the throwing lane, disrupts this a little bit. So Jones isn't normally going to be in these alignments. This is Pittsburgh's, just one of their sub-package fronts. And Jones is going to be shooting the A-gap, I think sometimes on his tape in certain situations. He's built, he's got a narrow build. And so I think sometimes there's there's multiple factors that play into this, but I think sometimes he doesn't deal well with lateral contact in the best ways. I think you can watch this in the reps where he reads what offenses are bringing tight ends across the formations um, on kickout blocks. If he reads it, he's golden. But I think if he doesn't read it and doesn't laterally anchor, and then in some of these situations, you're not going to be able well, – you're not going to be able to laterally anchor. You're just trying to shoot the gap. And he's got good get off. He's got good twitch out of his stance. But with a player who his best move is a counter punch into the B gap, you're going to be having to deal with some big dudes, some guards sometimes. And again, only 32 inch arm length. So this is just something else I'm considering. You'll see it in in certain examples on his tape. I, I just think that it's part of his build. Now, at the beginning of the video, we talked about how he's not really a reactionary hand fighter. He has some moves, and sometimes he does rework his hands in a good way. But in terms of what the offensive tackle shows and his process with his hands, I think he can use some improvement. Here's another example of that reactionary hand fighting we're talking about. So he's he gets really low in those four-point stances. And it cuts off a little bit. You just see this sometimes where it's like the tackle, it's like, all right, he's not flashing his hands. It's more of a wide technique. So I'm just not fully sure what he's going for. here. Like what the goal of the hand fighting is. I think a lot of times, like, like as we go back to this, I think he can play a little too fast for his own good sometimes. His get off's good. Can the rest of his game catch up to that? And with edge, it's a, it's a position that values athletes. And so can he develop parts of his rush plan his rush plan actually isn't bad but his process with his hand fighting i think definitely needs some work so like when we talk about reactionary hand fighting being different from his rush plan how he grades differently in those different dimensions i think you can tell a tendency for him to kind of like pre-plan out his moves like from the beginning he knows he's going with the double swipe the tackle's not flashing those the hand uses that you're going to double swipe. He's not going to two-hand punch you. It's more of a arms are operating independently. And so I think this is how you can tell. If you just watch a lot of his tape, I think he pre-plans out his moves. I don't think it's in reaction to what the tackle does. Tackle using a wider hand technique with his set. And so those can be a little susceptible to dip. I mean, with more athletic rushers, you're going to call it like a ghost move. I'll just call this like a dip because it's not really a, you know, you probably like he'll go to a dip and rip where he's getting that, that inside arm underneath the arm and then work in the outside. He's good at that, but he's not afraid to stick with a move if he knows it's good against your set. So for overall rush plan, I like that part about him. Quick pass, but whatever, like this play. I like that Jones isn't afraid to keep trying a move if he knows that's a good move to try. Does it work here? No. Eichenberg, wider, higher hands. This move is good against this. Does he fully get? He gets a little free there. And now it's going to be harder for him to corner because Eichenberg's in a decent spot. But I'm fine with him trying these types of moves. And being a little bit headstrong. It doesn't just have to be up to random chance. All right, what move am I going to try? If you know something works, why not go to it? Here's a good example of how I think his traits can help him to win early. So he's working this outside edge versus the left tackle. Getting into the chest initially. Swipe doesn't fully hit. He's still, still able to work to that outside. Finish for the sack. Pretty sure this was charted as a sack. Here's a move that I haven't really seen hit, but it's fun to watch. When he tries that inside spin, part of it is when he tries it, 
but also you got to be a little bit more compact, a little more coordinated. You don't really see a lot of like tall rushers. And he's almost 6'5". I think he's 6'4 and a half at the Senior Bowl. Outside of Brian Burns, you're not going to see very many tall rushers use an inside spin move. So for him, I'd probably scratch this one. I don't know if he's fully coordinated enough. I don't know if it plays to his strengths. I'd stick to more of the like upfield, like, all right, let's get some outside moves. Let's get some inside, um, some B-gap counters. And I'd probably stick to that for his overall like rush plan on what he wants to really do. You don't see these a ton. And with better rushers, you can say, sure, try it. But I'd probably limit him on that. And as we talked about, you can tell when a player has a favorite move. Because when they reduce him down a little bit, he's not in a wide nine like he normally is. He's still going to try to go back to that like that arm over swim. He loves using that. you got to know when to use it, though. And so I think it's a better move to pull out either as a counter or when you're from those wide alignment rushes. But I think it would be a little bit easier to handle when you're a little bit bumped inside. And so one of the things you're looking at is like how can he play with power? And I think with Jones, sometimes his initial rush can stall. I don't think he gets the ideal hand place initially. And then Eichenberg's able to like ride that rep out a little bit. Gets a little bit free to the inside, but the ball's already out. So I think actually playing down someone's center isn't one of Jones' strong suit. If you can build up a little momentum, it changes a little bit. But I think from like if you're having him in like a five tech and you're trying to have him play more of a power to, power dominant game. This is why I don't, I, he's definitely like a 4-3 end instead of a 3-4. You want him to deal with that little bit more space. You know, we talked about a player like Jenkins, like different side of the ball. But he's a guy that the more you play in a phone booth, the better off he is. With Jones, I think you want to widen the game out a little bit, give him a little bit more room to operate. Because I don't know if he's great at kind of powering through some of these reps. And you'll see it if you watch a lot of them. Here's another example. Playing Eichenberg a little bit more head up here. A little bit tighter alignment. And it's a quick pass play, but I think it just shows a little bit of once Eichenberg's got that hand in there, he's pretty much controlling the rep. And so when you start analyzing, like, okay, against better tackles, how is he going to fare with this outside rush lane? He's got more space to work with here. He's going to try the dip move here. Hands are high. Would have worked if it was a little bit more flexible or did something to disengage the hands a little bit earlier. The problem that you have is I think sometimes rushes can stall once offensive linemen, especially good ones, get their hands on him. And so this is where power can kind of play in because like with the dreads and everything, he looks a little bit like Zadarius Smith, but he doesn't play the same way because Zadarius, fourth rounder coming out, was much more of like a power dominant player. They weren't sure about the athleticism translating. With Jones, I think the get off's just going to be fine. J good get off. But I think your job at the NFL level can be harder if you're not able to create using power and so if you can't rush that outside arc i think more reps than not will look a little like this where if the tackle is able to stay with you it's hard to get your hands in positions of leverage it's hard to get his hands off you and you don't necessarily want to go through him because that's not really your game that's the concern at the next level but again he's got the higher floor because of the run defense uh, i think he's a pretty smart player he's a high effort player and he's got good get off you just wonder about plays like these. Here's a play that I probably watched like seven times over to figure out what happened. Because the physics of it looked kind of weird at first. My only explanation, I think it just has to do with the weight transfer of, of Eichenberg. I, I just don't think he gets it back out to that outside. It's like it's like kicking out the half the legs from a, from a stool. It's just going to fall over one side. But on the surface, it just looks like a weird play. We talk about evaluating the level of competition. This play is a good sign of that's an NFL player, that's not an NFL player. Gets to the top of the rush, he's just going tumble. And so against the NC State tackles, Jones' get off alone is enough to help get some of these advantages. Tackles just can't keep up with it. Now, here's a rep that looks great. He's going to get the single arm extension. Gets the tackle on the ground. You got to evaluate the level of competition too. I don't think fifty six is just at his like at his level. Um, you can just like just watch his feet. But when you watch these, you're 
you just wonder, it's like, is there more potential for some power stuff with Jones? Now, if you go watch like the Eichenberg tape, if you go watch him against a little bit better tackles, I would lean no. But if he's a much better athlete than you, he can do this type of stuff to you. I think he's still, based on just like analyzing his overall movement skills, I think he still has, like he can he can channel his power. He's not the most coordinated player with his lower body and with some of his hand uses. I think he can better channel his power. The only question is, what happens when he goes up against better tackles? Who are going to be able to handle the power? Is his counter punch going to be able to hit the same one? And so when you're looking at translating to the NFL, I think you want him playing in a certain way. And I think that is granting him, I think you want to give him space because when he can generate power, a lot of it is momentum based. He's in the wide nine, he's got a runway, and he can translate some of the speed into like what amounts to power. If he doesn't have, like, you don't want him playing like Epinesa, where if you look at a lot of Epinesa's rush pass, he's studying a lot of, like, leverages, and he's fine not coming out screaming out of the gates. But I think when Jones does this, it's a little different because you're not using his best tool. And so I think you want to try to keep him as, like, kind of, like, coiled up. Um, you kind of want him playing, coming hot out of the gates. You want to use the most of this get off. And if you look at some games late with Jones, he still has the juice late in the games. Now, the interesting thing about Jones is that I read that in high school, he might be a late developer. And so he could be growing into his body a little bit. If that's the case, it changes a lot of this. And his potential might be a little higher than I currently see it. If, because if he can learn to use his body to translate more of the power, and maybe he has more power that we just haven't seen. Do I think that he has more? I'm not really sure. I would lean no, but a lot of his overall movement shows me that he's a player who is still in development. And with the run defense, you might want to take a chance on him like late round three. But if you take a chance on him, you're like, do not play him in a 3-4. Keep him in the alignment that they're using. Maybe you can use him in some sub package stuff, but I think the wider his overall alignment and the more that he can kind of play it upfield with his hair pinned back or with his ears pinned back, I think the better off he's going to be. And so when you go back and look at him at his different levels of competition, I think against some of the worst tackles that he plays, you can notice things that kind of like contribute to like the threshold discussion about players. Like, can you do this at, you can do a certain thing against a certain player, but once that level goes up, can you still do that? So with this play, he's playing good extension through the hands, backside RPO. He does this a lot more against some of his lesser competition. I didn't see it as much in the Notre Dame game against some of his better teams. We didn't get to see him against Derisaw. I think part of it is actually like the physical like ability to corner. I think the other part is like, is he able to play through the outside half? A few things to factor. When you look at the fact that he's not proficient at this point with his hand usage now he doesn't have long arms but if he can get better at using them during a set is he going to be able to corner if not it's going to come down to a lot of just like his physical ability because a lot of really good rushers they can get to this point in the rush but it's easier for them to work through half man get the tackle to continue flipping his hips and not end up here but end up more here, and then it's easier to work your way back to the quarterback. I don't think he always does this, but I will say something. Because when you watch a player within the flow of the game, you can pick up on a lot of details. And I wrote this in my notes, that whenever I have something negative to say about him, it's really not that long before he kind of comes back in the positive column. And it's not always the most, the most spectacular play you've ever seen. This is actually a really good play. But he does have a tendency to kind of bounce back and just find a way to make some plays. And they're not the biggest splash plays all the time. But this is actually just a really good play by him. Where he's working that inside arm over. And then he gets the shoestring tackle in the B gap. And so within the flow of the game, I think he just makes some of these plays that just make me like him. 
And I don't think he necessarily has crazy star potential unless he can either add power or get more coordinated, improve his ability to corner, improve with hand fighting. But I think he's a pretty smart player. He plays with a lot of effort. And he always gets back on the good side of my of my notes, which I like from him. So do I love him? No. I think a lot of people are kind of looking at the highlights and saying, like, this guy could be the total steel sleeper of the draft. But I think that overall, you're actually getting a player with a higher floor than ceiling. And I think he could play in the NFL. I think he could be a good player because he's a redshirt senior, because he doesn't have the really, like, he doesn't have the long arm length. He doesn't have crazy power or at least ability to convert to power output. Those are the things that you're a bit concerned by. But in terms of actually like reading blocks and like all, all stuff that's not really sexy to talk about in the video, he does a good job at that stuff to where I'm fine playing this guy on the field early. Let's see what he's got. Let's see if he can learn. He might not be a 10 sack guy in his career, but I think this guy might hang around on some rosters for, for a little while. 